What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be doing a cocktail called a Oaxacan Roja by bartenders Ron Umfenauer and Matt Sullins of the bar Moxie in San Diego. Um, so Ron and his girlfriend Amy came to visit me at Kohl's this last week and they turned me on to this cocktail. This cocktail uh, was basically their version of a, it's just, not their version of, but just inspired by uh, the Little Italy cocktail, but utilizing uh, mezcal, um, drying out with a little maraschino liqueur, and I really, really liked it. I really thought it was great. So I thought that I would just kind of throw it into the viewer-created cocktails when he came to visit. We were having such a good time. Um, he was like, this is my cocktail. I said, you know, I'm going to make it and try it and see how it is. Uh, I thought it was really, really good. I asked him if he had um, submitted a cocktail, and he said he did not. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do this cocktail next week. I really like it. All right, I think that's all I got to say about it. Let's get into, oh, if you go to San Diego, go visit them. I think they both work at the same bar. D correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in the comments, but both of you guys both work at the same bar. And by you guys, I don't mean Ron and his partner that created the cocktail with him. Uh, I mean Ron and his girlfriend, Amy. I think they work at the same bar. But if not, tell me what bars you work at, and then you guys should go there, because their drinks are awesome. All right, let's get into making the drink. First thing we're gonna do, just a couple dashes of orange bitters. Then we're gonna do half an ounce of Chinar. Now, the original recipe calls for Chinar 70. I tried it both with Chinar and Chinar 70. Chinar 70 when we were at the bar, and then uh, I tested it with Chinar just on its own, and I like it better with Chinar, so I changed the recipe, guys. Sorry. But if you guys wanna do the original version, just get the 70 proof version of Chinar. But we're gonna do half an ounce of Chinar, Half an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino. You can always use Marasca as well. And then two ounces of Mezcal. And that's it. Then we're gonna take, these are my short ends from making uh, block ice. So the other day I was doing the uh, directional freezing to make some clear ice uh, in a, uh, like one of those little four liter Coleman um, uh, coolers. And you know, what's great is that you can take all of the, the ice form ice or the stuff that just doesn't really quite freeze or the stuff that you're cutting away when you're cutting your block ice and then just use it for uh, stirring, which is what I like to do. I'm using this very big mag stirring glass that I love uh, is from a Melha company. Uh, link is below, so check them out. They make some really awesome stirring glasses and uh, Nick and Nora's and glassware. They got a lot of good stuff, you should check them out. So you're just gonna give it a nice stir. You know, as I was like stirring this cocktail, I was thinking, you know, this is probably gonna come up short in this glass, which I just really wanted to use this glass because I love it. But I am going to use the matching glass that I got to this stirring glass. So I got this matching Nick and Nora, and I just love that pattern on the bottom of the glass. It's so nice. So beautiful. Just stir this down. Strain it. That's perfection. And then give it a little Luxardo cherry garnish. I'm just gonna boop, drop it in the cocktail. All right, let's give this bad boy a little taste. Talk about the flavors. So this cocktail features the mezcal, big time. You get all of those mezcal notes, you get all of the smokiness, you even get a little bit of the citrus. What's nice about it though, is that you have two different elements that are sort of sweetening and bittering. So you've got your chinar, which is gonna have a little inherent sweetness and then really bitter on the finish, and then you have your luxardo, which just has a little inherent sweetness and then it has the drying kind of effect on the palate. So what you've got is something that's like 
you, it goes in Mezcal, which so you're using the Lopez Real, which I have really been digging lately, and we're almost done with this bottle, hint, hint. You get that right on the front, all those Mezcal notes. And then it devolves to the dryness of the Luxardo, and then you get that really bitter back palate. What's fun is that you don't get the bitterness on the front of your mouth. It's really right on the back as you swallow. And the other thing that's really nice is that the, um, I'm not sure if it's the combination of the Luxardo and the Mezcal, or if it's the combination of the Chinar and the Luxardo, but you have some like an almost saline-like finish to it, which is really interesting. And I didn't even put a pinch of salt in here, but you get that. I'm going to say that it's like, I think it might even be the combination of all three it gives it this really nice saline. It's almost as if I had tossed a dash of uh, kosher salt into it, which I did not. You watched me do it. But it is, it's just like a beautiful, it kind of opens up in your mouth in a really beautiful way. I will say this, that you have to like mezcal to drink this cocktail because the mezcal is the star of the show. So what what are you going to say, Marius? What are you going to say? <laughs> Can you sub it? Can you sub it for something else? Can you sub it for something else? Uh, it's the most frustrating question that everyone asks is, can you sub it? Because the answer is, yeah, you can sub it. That said, it's going to be a completely different cocktail. You could put, you could definitely put tequila in this if you wanted to. I would say that if you put tequila in this, you'd probably want to put a reposado tequila in this because you're going to want barrel notes to pair with this, but it's not going to be this drink. It's going to be a different drink. And then you're going to have to name it because you just changed the main spirit. So it's like, can I sub it for this? Can I sub it for that? Yes, you can sub it. The thing is, is that when you sub it, you make a completely different cocktail. It's not what the author intended. You then made your own cocktail and you got to name it. So I don't know. Here's the thing. There are no rules. There is no such thing as right and wrong. There is such thing as good and bad. Developing your palate is going to help you figure out what good and bad is. And good and bad is subjective. So there you go. Take that for what you will. Take from that what you will, I guess. Speaking of naming, there are a lot of cocktails called Oaxacan something. Yeah. That must be the cock that must be the the place of a name that's mostly used in any cocktail. There's no other like... No. What, what other like... Tequila cocktails, no. Here's the thing. It is the most commonly used name to describe a mezcal cocktail. Oaxacan something. Because as everybody knows, the best cocktail names are cocktail names that are indicative, like are cheeky and roll off the tongue and not clunky, but at the same time, all right, have something to do with the origin and idea of the creation of the drink. If you can work the idea of the drink and be cheeky into a name, then you're gonna then you're you you are going to have an awesome name. And it's got to be able. It can't be clunky. It's got to be. It's got to roll off the tongue. If you can do all of that, that's why naming cocktails is so hard. But. Uh, people don't call anything Oaxacan unless it has mezcal in it. You just know that if it says like Oaxacan, the Oaxacan dead, the Oaxacan roja, the Oaxacan old fashioned, it's going to have some measure of mezcal in it. But I don't know if it's the most commonly, I, mean, other, I guess it is because yeah. it's like not many people. Name it's like, that for a place. Well, right. I mean, the thing is, is that tequila and mezcal, they are like, they have places of origin. You know, that you have to be from those places to make this. So the thing is, is that because of that, a lot of people will then work the place into the name of the drink. And it's a fun, there aren't fun that, name. I mean, like, like, think about it this way. Probably rivaled, probably rivaling the that uh, Oaxacan thing is probably Scottish drinks. So drinks with scotch in it. Pro I guarantee you that if we go look through like all the drinks with scotch in it, they're they're trying to work something culturally Scottish into the name of the drink because it is like a place that has an origin that you need to be. You can't make scotch outside of Scotland. You can't make tequila outside of Mexico. I don't think you can call something mezcal made outside of Mexico, although there's a lot more rules that govern tequila than they do mezcal, but I, I think it has to be, you know, 
that Charanda, that Mexican rum, comes from a very specific place. It has to be from that place or you can't call it Charanda. So, And Oaxaca is a fun name. Oaxaca it's, is a fun it's name. It's spelled weird and it sounds fun. It's spelled weird and it sounds fun. That's true. All of those things are true. All right. I don't know. We just went on a whole tirade. How, what, what minute are we at now? 10.18. Wow, 10.18. We're really, try, you're really trying to get that second ad break, aren't we? And into these videos. All right, guys. Well, I'm not going to take up any more of your valuable time. Uh, I hope that you guys stopped this video when we were done, made the cocktail, and was sipping it while we were talking about cocktail names. Uh, because you should have. And if you didn't, uh, rewind this, go make it, and watch it again. Uh, but if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash the educated barfly. We've got a lot of exclusive content going just to Patreon. We've been pretty gosh darn good about it, I think. Uh, even some of the stuff that comes to YouTube goes there ahead of time. There is something for everyone. You should go check it out. Staggerly Goods is our apron sponsor. They have a discount code with us, uh, barfly SLG20 at checkout. Or, I'm not sure when we're going to post this, so I'm just going to say that one. No, okay, I'll just say it. Fine. If we decide to post this before the end of the new year, which is possible, uh, there is a 30% discount. If it is after the new year, there is a 20% just discount. And the discount code for the 30% discount is SLG, save 30. Or if you're watching after the new year's, it's... If you're watching after the new year's, it's Barfly SLG 20, which is 20% at checkout. Uh, that was a lot of just rambling, All I right. guess. I don't know. What else do we... Oh, that, that's it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, check out Lopez Real Mezcal. Check them out on Instagram. They do awesome mezcal. Uh, and they're a small company and they're emerging and they do really, really good product. And they are all family owned. So you guys should check it out. I'm not sure how widely available they are right now, but they are definitely available in uh, Los Angeles. All right, guys. I'll see you on another time. Oh, and if it, you don't, if you can't find this mezcal, yes, you can sub it out for Vita Mezcal if you want. All right, guys, see you on another time. Be kind and rewind. What does that mean? You said, like, you go back and rewatch it, so be kind, rewind. Isn't that like a most deaf movie from, like, the early 2000s? No, that's be what they do, the sticker they used to put on VHS cassettes at, like, Blockbuster and stuff. I guarantee you, you, it's also a most deaf movie that has Jack yeah. Black in it. Yes, but that's referencing the VHS the stuff. Be kind, rewind. But yeah, because if you don't uh, rewind, if you don't rewind, then someone else says, "Well, not only that, you I, pay a fee." I think there was a guy at video stores that his whole sole job was to put cassettes into a thing and rewind them. You get a fee if you uh, didn't rewind. I used to work in a video store when I first moved to Los Angeles, and there was actually a little machine that you just stuck the things in, and then just just to rewind tapes. Yeah, yeah, and there was a fee. It was minimal though. Yeah, but be kind, rewind, and watch us again. All right, that's All it. All right. That was a weird piece of humor, but I'll let you Trivia, know I call it. Trivia? Yeah. How is it trivia? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. All right, guys, I will see you guys another time. We're cutting this now.